We have seen the dot product and the cross product. Now we are going to see the dyadic product. We are slowly getting into the second rank tensors. E i e j, if I write side by side, is called as a unit dyad. And E i e j is an ordered pair of coordinate direction. E i and e j and e k can be considered as a unit vector along i, j and k mutually orthogonal directions. And here we are considering E i e j is such that it is not equal to E j a i unless i equal to j. That means if I say E 1 E 2 that will not be equal to E 2 E 1, but if I say E 1 E 1 naturally E 1 E 1 is same with itself. So, E 1 E 1 equal to E 1 E 1 that is the meaning. These are the human definitions. This is the way we are defining. Now, in this way, there can be 9 possible dyads E1, E2, E2, E1, E1, E3, E3, E1, E2, E3, E3, E2, 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 E1, E1 and E3, E3. Note that we said E i, E j is not equal to E j, E i. So, E1, E2 and E2, E i are written as separate elements. So, in this set of unit dyads, we have 9 elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. E2, E2, E1, E1, E3, E3 are examples when i is equal to j. Now, these 9 elements in the set form or constitute a basis in space for the second rank tensors. We can call it tau. Now, here there is nothing to be afraid about. This is the definition and I will link it with the natural examples then it will be clear. For the time being, let me cover up to this much then I will compare these things with the natural situations. Its physical meaning will be explained. Now, tau, the second rank tensor will be presented as a linear combination of the unit dyads. That means, these are the 9 unit dyads. I will make their linear combination. How? Tau is equal to summation i runs from 1 to 3, summation j runs from 1 to 3, tau y j e i e j. I understand students who are hearing first time still it is a mystery, but I will make very clear. Please be with me. Now, this tau i j e i e j and these two summations what I can write? Please bring the camera here. Tau is equal to i 1 to 3. I am opening up j equal to 1 to 3. So, what to do? Tau i 1 instead of j I wrote 1 e i and then instead of e j I wrote e 1 then plus i equal to 1 to 3. Now, I will put j equal to 2 tau i 2 e i e 2 then plus sum of or summation i equal to 1 to 3 tau 1 i 3 i is i j becomes 3 here e i remains e i e j here this j becomes 3. So, 3. Now, each of these 3 will give 3 terms. So, 3 multiplied by 3 there will be 9 terms. Now, if I expand further for i equal to 1, 2, 3, i equal to 1, 2, 3 and i equal to 1, 2, 3, if it is done, then look at this expression. It becomes tau 1, 2, e 1, e 2 plus tau 2, 1, e 2, e 1 plus tau 1, 3, e 1, e 3 plus tau 3, 1, e 3, e 1 plus tau 2, 3, e 2, e 3 plus tau 3, 2, e 3, e 2 plus tau 2, 2, e 2, e 2 plus tau 3, 3. This will be e 3, e 3, just a minute, I will correct it. plus tau 1 1 e 1 e 1. So, what has happened? It is a linear combination. We see that in all these terms tau and then the first suffix will be e is first suffix and the second suffix for tau is the second e suffix and in this way they are written and there is no mystery in it. Now, these plus symbols are tensorial additions and they are not the arithmetic addition. We will explain in detail. Now, it is good time having said this to explain what it means physically. Have a look at this cuboid drawn by the blue color. We have considered three perpendicular axes 1, 2 and 3 
in the other books you may find different books x1 x2 x3 x y z so many ways of writing are available now we define tau ij on the cube the tau is a stress that acts on plane that is perpendicular to axis i and it is also acting towards j axis or the j direction tau acts on a plane that is perpendicular to axis i here is i first suffix and it also acts towards along the j direction j is the second suffix now let's take this plane we see that this plane is perpendicular to axis 1 so therefore any stress that acts on this plane will have the symbol tau 1 and something imagine on this plane three stresses are acting one is the normal stress which i am calling as tau 1 1 in the diagram in 3d it will go like this and there is a stress that acts on this plane and parallel to axis 2 and there is another stress acting on this plane and parallel to axis 3 now this plane which i have drew which i have drawn by orange color can be called as plane 1 why because this plane is perpendicular to axis 1 or in some book in some other notation we can call this as plane 2 3 because this plane is parallel to the 2 3 plane 2 3 are the this is 2 and 3 so that is a vertical plane any plane parallel to the 2 3 plane can be called as plane 2 3 so in some book it is plane 1 some book it is plane 2 3 now these three stresses that are acting on plane 1 will have tau 1 as per this tau x on the plane that is perpendicular to axis i here axis i is your axis 1 now we note that this line of action shown by green color is acting along axis 1 so this stress can be called as tau 1 1 now similarly what about this this stress that is acting on plane 1 it is acting on plane 1 so it is tau 1 and it, in, it is acting parallel to axis 2 so we can call it as tau 1 2 what about this stress this on this plane that i am drawn here i am pointing out by finger it is lying on plane 1 so the first suffix will be tau 1 and it is acting parallel to axis 3 so i can it call i can call it tau 1 3 so in this way i have explained the notation tau 1 1 tau 1 2 and tau 1 3 out of these three stresses tau 1 1 is a normal stress acting perpendicular on this orange plane tau 1 2 and tau 1 3 are shearing stress they are working parallel to the plane in two orthogonal directions note that tau 1 1 as per my drawing acts towards the positive direction of 1 tau 1 2 acts towards the positive direction of 2 tau 1 3 acts towards the positive direction of 3 axis 3 so in this case we can have also a plus minus convention since all are acting towards the plus direction any stress that is acting towards the plus direction of the axis we can call it a positive stress so here tau 1 1 tau 1 2 and tau 1 3 are more than 0 we will not write minus 5 pascal we will write 5 pascal we will not write 7 point minus 7.2 pascal we should write 7.2 pascal now i will take this plane and here on this plane i will consider three lines of actions of stresses one of them is this one which is acting perpendicular to the plane now we can see this plane is perpendicular to axis 2 so i can call that plane as plane 2 alternately i can call this plane as plane 1 3 1 3 or 3 1 same and here plane 2 3 or 3 2 whatever now since the stress 
is acting on this plane which is perpendicular to axis 2 any stress acting on it will be given a symbol tau 2 you note the definition tau acts on a plane that is perpendicular to axis i here i is axis 2 next the line of action of this stress is along the axis 2 so i call it as tau 2 2 now i will consider two shear stresses this one and that one in this case we see that it acts along direction 3 so that one is called tau 2 3 and I will consider another stress like this which is acting towards axis 1 so I will call it as tau 2 1. So in this way the three stresses are marked tau 2 2 is a normal stress on this plane tau 2 3 and tau 2 1 are the shear stresses acting on that plane. So on this plane the three stresses have been the symbols have been explained and on this plane one normal stress and two shear stress symbols have been explained. Now consider on the top plane here three lines of actions of stresses are there one is the normal stress and two are the shear stresses. We are going to name we are going to explain the meaning of these notations and for that purpose I will little bit clear the board because these are already done. Note that this plane is perpendicular to axis 3. So, any stress acting on it will have the symbol tau 3 and something because again look at the definition tau acts on the plane that is perpendicular to axis i. So, here stress is acting on this plane which is perpendicular to axis 3. So, I write tau 3. Next, this stress is acting along direction 3. So, that can be called tau 3 3. So, in this way the normal stress has been named as tau 3 3. Now, there are two shear stresses here and there. These two shear stresses are making 90 degree angle. Here also these two shear stresses making 90 degree angle. Here also on this plane the two stresses this and this are making 90 degree angle. Now, back to this. This line of action you can see the arrow is towards axis 1. So, I have to call it tau 3 1 and here is a line of action of the stress that is along direction 2. So, I will call it tau 3 2 and doing this all the three stresses have been given some symbol. So, now what has happened on this cube there are three normal stresses acting tau 1 1, tau 2 2 and tau 3 3 and there are six shear stresses acting two of which in one plane tau 1 2 tau 1 3 in one plane on a perpendicular plane tau 2 3 and tau 2 1 and on another plane tau 3 1 and tau 3 2. So, what we understand when we write tau i i or tau j j such as tau 1 1 tau 2 2 and tau 3 3 they are the normal stresses as per this way of presentation. Okay. And another way of writing is this I can write tau i j represents a normal stress if i equal to j. Okay. Now, what about the shear stresses? Let us try to understand the shear stresses that has been found on the three perpendicular planes are tau 3 1, tau 1 3, tau 3 2, tau 2 3, tau 1 2, tau 2 1. So, we clearly understand tau i j represents shear stress if i is not equal to j this has been done
now these three three and three total nine components of stresses that are acting on the cube we can find out a resultant stress acting on the cube as well and how to do it we have seen previously if i take on any two plane let's say i am considering tau 1 3 and tau 1 2 acting on this plane we can find out a resultant and then from that resultant i can resultant and tau 1 1 i can find another resultant likewise resultants on plane 1 plane 2 and plane 3 can be obtained this is for plane 1 for plane 2 and for plane 3 can be obtained now these three resultants can give rise to a grand resultant of stress the magnitude and the direction can be worked out i have already discussed some in some videos how to find out the resultant magnitudes and directions from the given stresses in the coordinate axis case so that can be done so although there are nine components of stresses acting on this cube finally we can think that there is a tiny cube and there is a single component of stress that is acting and in other words we can think that there is a small cube and a single component of stress is acting and that has been resolved to total nine components the purpose of resolution into nine components and whatever i am discussing has a strong physical purpose physical meaning that will be explained gradually it is not that haphazardly and out of no interest people have done so many details it helps in solving problems in physics then in geophysics then in structural geology plate tectonics petrophysics rock physics rock mechanics engineering geology so this study becomes very very important the basic knowledge of tensor is required to sustain in geoscience career okay so now all these components being stated please get back into this expression tau is equal to tau 1 2 e 1 e 2 plus tau 2 1 e 2 e 1 and it is good time to explain what it means to explain the tau 1 2 stress we have taken help of e 1 and e 2 why and how tau 1 2 is here we have taken the help of axis 1 and axis 2 that is why e 1 e 2 similarly to explain tau 2 1 we have taken the help of axis 2 and axis 1 that is why e 2 e 1 so now in that way for all these smaller components to explain any tau we have taken help of the two axis now with this idea we get back into the definition of the stress of or tensor of second rank we said that there are nine possible unit diodes they are like one unit i can think one unit one unit etc and they form the basis in space for the second rank tensor what it means only because i define e1 e2 in that manner i am taking help of axis 1 and axis 2 i am taking help of axis 2 and axis 1 i am taking help of axis 1 and axis 3 i am able to write the stress in this format so they form the basis this is the very basic on which the second rank tensor has been established and in space stress is acting in so many directions in the space so this word is explained and they form a second rank tensor why second rank because i have taken the two axes e1 and e2 together in defining it so it is a second rank tensor so this leads to a question what is the meaning of a first rank tensor it will be interesting to explain have a look at this axis 1 axis 2 and axis 3 say here there is a unit vector e1 here is a unit vector e2 and here is a unit vector e3 their lengths are unity and i think of a point this is o the origin this is p and i draw a line and i say op as a vector not i am talking right now as a vector op is a vector so now i can write op vector in this way e1 into x plus e2 into y plus 
e 3 into z and the p coordinate is given by x comma y comma z say along the axis 1 x unit you have to travel along the axis 2 y unit you have to travel and then along axis 3 z unit you have to travel then you reach the point p when you start from o x unit y unit and z unit that is why the coordinate of point p is x y z so now op vector can be represented in this manner so what has happened i have taken help of e1 e2 and e3 to define it here we were taking help of two axes so it is second rank so such vectors i have taken them only once so we can call vectors are first rank tensors in different books you will find different way of introducing second rank tensor and i have taught over years and i have found this is the way where i can make students understand better first i give the definition little bit go into the theory i come into this cuboid dot the cube and the stress resolution correlate these units with here then after that i go back to vectors and say that they are tensors of rank 1 and this becomes understood once the vectors are tensors of rank 1 the question is is there anything te any tensor of rank 0 let's try to understand it the answer is yes they are basically scalars For example, I say that in a bucket I have got 5 apples. To represent this 5, I do not need the coordinate axis x, y, z, e, x, e, y, e, z, 1, 2, 3, nothing is required, no coordinate is required. Since we do not take help of the coordinate, so in this case 5 is a scalar, it has no directional sense, no coordinate axis is used. So, it is a tensor of rank 0. All scalars will be tensors of rank 0. And what I have explained now, vectors are tensors of rank 1 because to represent in 3 dimension, in the way I have done, in the way people have done, we take help of the 1, 2 and 3 axis one at a time in defining the coordinates. And now here comes, I hope now you clearly understand why we call, again go back to this second rank tensor because we are taking help of e1, e2, e2, e3, e2, e1, e1, e3, etc. Here in the definition, we have said that ei, ej is not equal to ej, ei. Why we have said like that? Because we can see in a cube, when we are applying the stress, there is no guarantee that tau 1, 2 will be equal to tau 2, 1, etc. is not guaranteed. It depends on how we, how much stresses we are applying using a machine or in geological cases there is no guarantee that tau 1 2 will be equal to tau 2 1 or in other words tau i j equal to tau j i is not guaranteed. If it is not guaranteed we have to consider tau 1 2 and tau 2 1 as separate units and that has been done over here. So we say that e i e j and e j e i are different. So, therefore, tau 1, 2, e 1, e 2 and tau 2, 1, e 2, e 1 have to be taken as separate entities because these magnitudes there is no guarantee that they are same. If they were same we could have considered but here at least we are not considering in the I hope it is clear to you. Now, we said I said that this is the tensorial addition and not the arithmetic addition. What does it mean? I mean that Suppose tau 1 1 has got some magnitude say 5 Pascal, tau 1 2 is say 13 Pascal, tau 1 3 is 2 Pascal, tau 2 3 is something something all the values are given. How much is the resultant stress tau? How much is the resultant stress tau? It cannot be done simply by adding up those numbers. That is why I am writing is a tensorial addition and not an arithmetic one. 
we have already seen such things you already know about it for example if i write a vector p and sketch here vector q given some magnitudes some stress amounts or some force amounts are given the resultant r magnitude need not be same as the sum of the two vectors magnitudes there is only one case when they can be added up when p and q act along the same direction they can be added up in that case that is r but that is a special case so in case of vector also you know that we cannot just add up the magnitudes of the vectors to get the result and there is a formula which i have already discussed i can write r the magnitude is given by root over p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta where this angle is basically theta angle so in this sense i hope now you understand that this plus does not mean just add up tau 1 2 tau 2 1 tau 1 3 tau 3 1 amounts you cannot add up that will be a tensorial addition and in one way to understand is that as i told you from these three stresses find out the resultant stress from these three find out the resultant from these three find out the resultant then find out the grand resultant stress in that way it can be done so that is the significance of this plus symbol